Well, welcome to Feel Resilient. Who to trust with your health, your liberty, your sustainability, and your spirituality. It's my real pleasure to introduce you to my friend, Teresa McCloy of the Real Life Process. Teresa is going to help us to understand what, first of all, what matters, and then to do what matters. And there's something that uh, maybe like you, you know, you've struggled like I have, and that is, first of all, to know what matters, and then to focus deep into doing what matters. And I don't think it's possible to feel resilient, right? Really, a deep down resilience that you can move forward regardless of the storms of your life unless you have a deep understanding of knowing what matters and then to focus on those things, doing those things that matter. So I certainly hope you enjoy our discussions on feel resilient. What, what does it mean to feel resilience? Yeah. Interesting. So yeah. because this is my brain, I just Googled it. Okay. So interesting definition of the word resilience the capacity to recover quickly from difficulty and and then it has a semicolon toughness, right? Mm -hmm. I'm resilient. Mm -hmm. So to recover quickly means because I've already pre-decided this map of how I want my life to work, I don't have to always be using up a bunch of energy and brain power and body space to make those decisions. I pre-decided, I discerned for me, it's discerned from a spiritual place um, and discerned from an emotional place, what, what I want my life to look like. Mm -hmm. A phrase that I've been saying a lot, and I think you'll resonate with this, it's coming out in the book that we're putting out this year, living from rest, not rush. Yes, right. So two words that I use there often to describe that is, if I pre-decide so that I build this resiliency and this, this ability to recover quickly, mm -hmm. I'm doing it from an internal place, not an external. So when I would say that I'm a recovering workaholic, that all came from external. You want me to do this. You need me to say yes to this. Sure, I'll build a new business. Sure, I'll, you know, for maybe some of your followers, I'll open up a new practice. I'll do this. I'll do that. Right. And we're just find ourselves saying yes to lots of things instead of if we have internally decided in our real self is what we call it, what our needs are, what our values are, what matters to us. We've checked in with how we're wired naturally. Some of us are wired to move very slowly in things and of us, others of us make really quick decisions. When we know ourselves well, now we can build a resiliency that comes out of us naturally this way, not mm -hmm. everything's coming in this way and I'm just rush, 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 rush. I still get a lot done. I always tell people, even though I say I'm living from rest, I'm very productive, but I know ahead of time what I wanted to be productive around. Exactly. So that's what we're building for you. That's what we're gonna explore even today as we uh, dive in is what is Steve's rule of life? What does Steve course, want to say yes to? What, what do I want to say yes to? And of course you sent me the needs and values assessment, which I'll fill out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and because what I'm hearing and correct me if I'm wrong, but this rule of life, the, you know, to be able to live from a position of rest and not rush depends on a clear understanding of your, your needs and your values, correct? Absolutely. I know, I know that uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why I bring that up is because I know that people who are listening and watching, one of the things that they're facing right now is a decision about what to put in their bodies. Mm -hmm. Right. And whether or not they have the right to choose what goes into their bodies or some other entity has the right to choose for them. Mm -hmm. For me, that's a huge values issue. Mm -hmm. And, and as you say, if you haven't 
pre-decided. Absolutely. Then when these when these you know we're faced with all you know we'll just call it right now all, all these agendas and people are going what's that phrase you know something smells fishy in Denmark you know I don't know if that's exactly that <laughs> you know <laughs> something doesn't seem right about this this smells fishy something is going on and I don't necessarily understand and I'm saying to me for me personally I don't understand all of the issues and all the motivations that's what I'm encouraging mm-hmm. people to come on this journey with me but the reality is we're faced to make these decisions at least we, right now we have the opportunity to make those decisions out of our values which need then we need a clear understanding what those values are and one of those values is do i have autonomy over my own body and and so as we talk about this and you know in our lifetimes we're going to we're going to face many you know, the time we're walking in right now is one thing, right? But we will, depending on our age, depending on how long we're on this earth, we will pace many of these things along the way. And we will have many times where we have to go, is that, you know, is that where I want to put my stake in the ground? Is that where I value something? Um, So I'll just share with you, because this might be interesting. Um, I brought up my values. Okay. So my personal values from this assessment that we have that you're going to be taking for our conversation next week, my personal values is I have a value. My number one is my spirituality. Mm -hmm. And I define that as my faith. Okay. Okay. My number two is, so the way this assessment works is it gives us this big category. So, you know, spirituality is my big category. And then the smaller word that it gives you to choose I just find my spirituality is faith. Now there's other words in that list that you can choose from, but that's for me. My second value, highest value is teaching. That's the broad category, but I define it as to instruct. Actually kind of what we're doing here. Not not strange. My mom was a teacher, right? So I know teaching, but I want people And you'll see how these tie together. My next one is actually to be a catalyst. Okay. So to somehow cattle, you know, make something go forward. I define that in the smaller category as impact. Now others might choose a different word. I wouldn't be surprised if when you do this, one of your words might fall around here, but you might choose a different way of describing what it means to be a catalyst. Another one of my values is actually I value emotion, but I define it as empathy. I always want to have empathy towards others. And then my last value is mastery. And I define that as the best. The best. Okay. And so So when you take this assessment, Steve, next week, you're going to get five major categories, and then it'll ask you one more time out of that major category, what's the word that helps you best describe that? Interesting. So when I'm making decisions in my life around my buckets, my areas of focus, I've been able to look at them. So in the work that I do as a coach, as a um, teacher as an instructor of this process that I have. And we now have people across the country that are using the same content to help their people. You can see how it aligns teaching catalyst mastery. Three of my values align with the work I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Then I'm also value showing up deeply in relationships. Mm -hmm. That's huge for me. So there's where empathy comes in. And then this is driving all of these. So when I look at my areas of my life, these values are driving what I'm saying yes to and what I'm saying no to based on, you know, if I was doing something where I had to sit all day in a room, you know, like plug in software or on an assembly line, putting things together, it wouldn't align with who I am. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed our, my discussion with Teresa McCloy from the Real Life Process, helping you understand what really matters and then, of course, doing what matters. And I personally don't think that you can move forward effectively and really feeling resilient unless you know what matters to you and then you focus on doing what matters to you. So again, trust that you've enjoyed that conversation and look forward to you seeing many more of these conversations going forward as we build out for you under the umbrella of feel resilient, this idea of really understanding and doing what matters. See you on the next video.